Hello, and thank you for watching. My name is Dave Preston. I'm a survivor of a severe to extreme case of OCD that I battled for four years. Today, I consider myself an ex-sufferer, meaning although I still get the odd intrusive thought, they don't bother me and I don't react to them with compulsions. I'm a mental health advocate and consider myself a peer support specialist where OCD is concerned. I'm the creator of OCDlife.ca, I blog regularly, and I spend a lot of time on OCD forums, helping sufferers with their journeys to wellness. I'm going to talk about why stopping compulsions is so important. First, I'll give a little recap about what OCD is. OCD involves obsessions and compulsions. Obsessions are intrusive thoughts, images, worries, fears, impulses, urges, or sensations that cause distress. Most people call the distress felt anxiety, but it can also be fear, worry, guilt, shame, or disgust. Compulsions are acts, behaviors, rituals, or mental rituals done to try and alleviate the distress caused by obsessions. But there's a catch. Every time an OCD sufferer does a compulsion, it reinforces the belief in their mind that there is something wrong. Instead of alleviating the situation, compulsions make things worse. If compulsions make things worse, then not doing them should make things better. Stopping compulsions is one step on the road to recovery. It's part of what you learn in CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, and it's an important step. No one ever fully recovered from obsessive compulsive disorder while continuing to do compulsions. Let that sink in. You cannot get better if you continue to perform compulsions. Imagine for a moment a sufferer with contamination OCD. Every time he gets an intrusive thought that he's touched a contaminated thing, he washes his hands vigorously, sometimes with bleach and a brush. He thinks he's fixing the original problem, but what he's really doing is setting things up so that his brain believes the original problem was real, that there was in fact contamination present. He's also setting it up so that his brain will react strongly and forcefully the next time there is perceived contamination present, which will require even more washing. It's an endless cycle until the sufferer fights back by working on his compulsions. Now sufferers don't have to quit cold turkey, though that is always an option. They can put into practice delay and reduce. Before attempts are made at delaying compulsions and reducing the frequency of compulsions, the sufferer should set up a goal for where he wants to be in the future as far as compulsions are concerned. This should hopefully be discussed with a qualified OCD therapist or a knowledgeable friend or family member. The idea is to set a future goal of what normal would be. For instance, the sufferer with contamination OCD who washes his hands roughly and often could set up a goal that he wants to only wash his hands after using the washer after handling raw meat, and if they are visibly dirty and only for one minute at a time, never using bleach. That's a worthy goal to work toward. Now to get there, the sufferer is probably not going to be able to just stop all of the extra washings and bleachings and scrubbings. He'll want to put into place the tactics of delay and reduce. Delaying means to delay a compulsion for a set amount of time instead of doing it right away like what was normally done. 
Reducing means to cut back on the number of times the compulsion is done. For instance, the sufferer I've used as an, as, as an example in this video might normally scrub his hands as soon as he gets an intrusive thought that he has touched a contaminated object. To start, he could delay that compulsion by five minutes. He could do that every time he feels he needs to get rid of contamination. Perhaps he does that for a week or two weeks. Once he's comfortable delaying by five minutes, he then starts delaying by 10 minutes. He does that for a week. Then he stretches the delay by 20 minutes and so on. The idea is that once the delay time has been stretched out to a certain amount, the sufferer will reach a point where he no longer feels like he has to wash his hands every time. He'll learn that the anxiety he felt after the intrusive thoughts has dissipated on its own without having to do the compulsion. The same is true for reducing. Sufferers can reduce the frequency of compulsions on a set schedule. For instance, a woman who has a compulsion where she has to tap 10 times on a door jam before entering a room can reduce the compulsion to eight times the first week, six times the second week, and so on until no tapping takes place. Compulsions fuel OCD. They are the gasoline for the OCD engine. They keep the OCD alive and coming back in the future. Cutting back on compulsions and eventually eliminating them is a critical part of recovery. Now you can find me at ocdlife.ca or on Twitter or Facebook at ocdlifeca. If you'd like to know more about my story of dealing with OCD for 40 years and how I recovered, pick up this book at Amazon Truth Be Told, A Journey from the Dark Side of OCD. Thank you for watching and be kind to yourself.